Francis Pellegrino along with my colleague Kai Pineda. Together we make up the team Nikki and Minnie. We'll be presenting our research findings on Disney World's theme park uh, ticket sales tonight. Uh, today, Karina will be discussing our secondary research along with our recommendations, and I will be discussing the research purpose along with our conclusion. conclusion. So, what we want to learn from this is how guests will feel and um, react to the different prices uh, Disney is implementing right now. We also want to know uh, ways competitors might be catching up in terms of their own ticket sale prices in terms of Disney's. We also want to look at how Disney is going to be recovering from all this lost revenue from these pricing changes. So going into, into the introduction, we'll be discussing some of the main points we'll be going over tonight. So the first one is going to be dynamic pricing. Disney is implementing new kinds of pricing that goes by day by day instead of uh, monthly or yearly. So all this pricing is going to go into the three different parks in uh, the, the um, Disney World. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the attendance shifts to the different seasons in response to these dynamic prices. People are going to be seeking out different days and specific months to go join that are a little bit different from in the past. We're also going to be seeing why they will be uh, decreasing total market share in, compa in uh, comparing to competitors such as maybe Universal. And overall, at the end, we're going to be providing some suggestions on how to regain um, market, or yeah, how to regain uh, ticket sales and maybe regain some of the lost revenue they've um, have been decreasing the past few months. So, who here has heard of Disney? <laughs> exactly, everyone. Disney just turned out 90 years old a few days ago, and it's incredible to believe that 90 days or not nine years <laughs> to this uh, very exact day or a couple days ago. They were able to have this extremely large fan base after that first ever animation they made back all that time ago. So the park originally opened in 1971, and until then it's become the largest and most successful theme park of any uh, theme, uh, any uh, brand of theme park in the world. They actually aspire to follow Walt Disney himself and the um, original creation to uh, create stories and create that entertainment value that he tried to find back when he created his company. They're also up to about 150 million visitors a day, according to the statistics back in 2017. And just to show you uh, a comparison, this is San Francisco in a one-scale mile, and this is the entirety of Disney World, just to show you how big this park actually is. And why this is important to ticket sales is that competitors such as maybe Universal or other theme parks in the surrounding area only have one park. Even um, Disneyland in Anaheim, California would only make about this square right here as the entire park park and also Universal. So having these all these different parks gives them a lot more stretch and revenue and shows just how much more content they're able to deliver to their customers and charge for that higher price. I'll now be handing over to Kai. Okay, so the challenges Disney's facing is that they've implemented a dynamic pricing, which they've had for many years, but they've increased the price. So right now, the price goes as high as $129, but you only find that price during the summer. And then during the fall, you see it go down to $109. And these prices stay strictly either in the summer at the highest or at $109, the lowest in like the fall or spring. And the like reason this is important is because summer is a lot of the times some people can only go in the summer because they get off of work or they get off of school and that's just the one time they can go. So there's actually rumors going around that Disney did this on purpose, the dynamic pricing to redistribute the crowd so that less people would go in the summer and they would go all around the year. But that has actually kind of backfired on them because ticket sales are going down not only in the summer but throughout the year because like I said, some people can only go in the summer. So um, there you see, and the more moderate pricing would be from 122 to um, 114 and even that $8 difference, that's a $40 for a family of five or the $20 difference from 129 and 109 is a $100 difference for a family of five. So if people are able to skip out on going in the summer and are able to go in the fall, when there's even like Christmas decorations or Halloween parties going on, then they'll sh are more likely to choose the fall instead of staying in the summer. So um, these are articles from 
one uh, popular tourist blog that has like millions of views per year and then another New York Times article. And they claim that summer is not the peak season anymore, pretty much for the um, examples I just gave you. So locals are waiting, even AP's annual pass holders, so locals, and if they don't have an annual pass and they can make it on the weekend, they're just waiting to go on the weekend or in the fall so that they don't have to go for the, uh, for the more expensive summer prices. And then other possible reasons that crowds are going down in the summer is because it's really hot, there's less international travel, and high um, annual pass holder and hotel prices. But the New York Times article and the tourist blog both claim that this has never been a problem in the past, so why is it changing so much now and making the reduction in the summer now? So they are sticking for the reason that the dynamic pricing being so high is what's making people come more in the fall. Okay, so Disney World's biggest competitor is of course Orlando, because it's the only other like really big theme park there. So they're doing, they actually, their market share one of 1% 1 in Disney World's went up 0.9%. So in a way they stole Disney's market share. And the ways they do this is they actually have really fast construction and like renovation processes. So the Disney decade was in the 90s and that's when they were coming up with new rides, new hotels, new attractions every year. So people had a reason to go back, spend more money and just know they were gonna find something new at the park. But now since they're, um, they have basically like a full land. They can't just like open up new lands all the time because they run out of space to put them in. So one thing that Universal does is they revamp old rides that are like no longer current or relevant and they make it new like the Minions ride, the Fast and the Furious experience. And they also open complete new, completely new rides like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And that brings a lot of traction because people know that they're gonna find something new so, and Universal has a lot more freedom to do this because Disney has a lot of old, very nostalgic rides. Like one's the Carousel of Progress, and that barely gets any visitors during the year, but if people were to, well, if Disney was to take it down, people would go like on a social media stampede and tell them like they can't do that because that's the one ride Walt Disney was able to design for Disney World. So because of these nostalgic feelings that people have associated with Disney, um, Disney World doesn't have as much leeway to revamp these old rides. So findings are that people, like Disney raised prices to redistribute crowds, but it backfired on them. And that theme park goers like these new attractions, but Disney can't always like bring in these new attractions. And they're reluctant to reconstruct old rides unless people are going in the summer because of high prices. So some rec recommendations are, since attractions can't be just opened up all the time and then people are, would get mad or angry or disappointed if they close down certain rides. They need to like do surveys to find out which rides people are actually not liking that much. And they actually did do a survey and there's one experience called Stitches Great Escape that they surveyed a, a bunch of kids from like four to 12 and these kids actually said that that's the worst ride and that they don't like it, but it's still there. So Disney actually needs to listen to what the kids are saying and to what other surveyors are saying and get rid of these old rides and bring something more current and relevant that people would want to go to see. Another recommendation is to lower summer pricing. So if they lower summer pricing, they need to find some other way to regain the money that they lost from that. And one way to do that is to have a slight price increase in merchandise or food. Obviously that sucks for us, but if we're thinking in terms of Disney, that would bring up the higher pricing. So if they lower even those $8 and have an increase of 75 cents for a churro or a hot dog or whatever it is they're selling. Disney World has 53,000 guests on average per day, so even if they upcharge only 75 cents, that's already like a $40,000 price in, um, profit increase. And if the first thing that people look for when they book their tickets is obviously the pricing. They're not gonna go and look up how much the food costs or how much merchandise is costing. They're already gonna assume it's expensive. So if they lower the ticket pricing, but then charge them more in other areas, people will book their tickets and go and spend more money anyway on food and merchandise. And I will hand it over now to Francis for the conclusion. Thank you. So today we learned uh, why Disney had decreasing guests was because of a lack of expansion and um, a lack of changing the nostalgic rides to more modern rides. It also is a joint by joint uh, part from the lack of a bad strategy of the ticket sales operations. 
We also learned that the peak season has changed from the summer more to the fall. And our main recommendation is to improve revenue, is to promote their new rides and cut the cost of tickets. Question? Thank you.